we live in a part of the world where, in general, if you go with the flow, you will end up overweight or obese and your children will end up unhealthy. We live in a part of the world where food is big, food is fast, and food is generally unhealthy. And the solution to that problem is readily available to many of us, and it's that pot in our kitchen that we just need to get out and start taking back control from the big food corporations and make food for our families. in the program in human biology. I teach courses on child health and child nutrition and one of the reasons I'm so interested in that topic is because I'm actually the mother of three young children as well. So this is both a passion for me and an area of academic interest. So I started trying to what they call flip my classes so that means that I would use some uh, material that I would put online and then in class we'd have more time to engage in sort of real-life um, applications of those topics. I thought what better way to continue that kind of teaching than to put together some online modules that just take away the fear around sort of cooking healthy simple economical food for your family. Basic skills of how to make healthy food, I think that those skills are going to be as important for their long-term health and survival as knowing how to read. These Stanford kids, like myself, were really busy in high school doing a lot of other things, and food was sort of just the fuel that kept them going. I didn't really actually take up like a big interest in cooking until recently when I realized that Someday I'm gonna be on my own, and I need to know how to make good food. I do think my mom cooked quite a bit. She was the one who cooked. Uh, usually it was a combination of rice, beans, and then some kind of meat, whether it's pork, chicken, or beef of some sort. Probably at least once a week, and maybe even more. Uh, my dad would definitely take us out to go eat fast food or something. I knew a lot about food, but virtually nothing about cooking. Didn't know how to cook anything. I think the best thing I could make was like, grilled cheese. I was I always really liked to like help my mom cook and, and stuff. I didn't necessarily get like as much of a chance to and as we got older like our meal times got super splayed out. So this course could not have come together without the support in the especially in the early stages from Eric Montel who basically heard the mission and said this is something we want to support. I'm Eric Montel, executive director for Stanford Dining. So I tell the story of uh, when I went to meet her, she showed me the curriculum for the class. And then she actually showed me some of the videos that would be there. I was amazed. I was stunned. I was almost in tears. Yeah, what I told her was it was really at the core of what we, our function and our role within the university. And for me, even personally, it was very moving to see uh, uh, this commitment and this inspiration that she was working with students on. And then when we were in the kitchen, we had the expert um, advice and care of David Eott. I'm the executive chef here at Ariaga Family Dining Commons. I would help them get set up. I would um, basically uh, walk through the class, ask, answer questions from the students, uh, give them a little bit of critique. Um, being able to uh, be involved in any way with the learning process that was going on. It's nice to be able to get in front of and work with the students directly. And then they would come in and they would get inside the kitchen, they'd get an apron, they'd wash their hands, and they'd get a big chopping board and some fresh produce or some fresh meats or, or things that they needed to make those recipes. So we're using another pan to cover the pan that we're using to cook with. And we're adding like a little bit of water to add some steam. We made a cauliflower carrot oat roasted soup here with onions and garlic and a little bit of lemon. I think my favorite part uh, uh, was definitely when you could see someone going into a menu and the light bulb would go off. 
and you could see that they were getting very excited about what they're about to do. I really enjoyed making the soup. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, and it's definitely something that, as I've gone back home, like that's like one of the few things that I have I actually tried to make on my own, and it's worked out successfully. And so that's been really cool to be able to actually cook for my family. Um, the favorite thing that I've cooked is actually the baked salmon that we made. And all we did was get like a simple mixture of like mayonnaise, um, some basil leaves, and some parsley. And we just we literally just mixed it up, and put it over some salmon, and put it in the oven and it came out really, really good. Like, this, this is probably like one of the best salmons that I've ever tried. Some of the students told me that they had never, for example, flipped an egg. Um, and that was one of the things, first things we did in the breakfast unit. And I think the most beautiful sight for me was kind of seeing one of the students who said to me that they had never done anything in the kitchen and seeing that student then, you know, six weeks down the line, taking a knife and mincing garlic, but with such skill that I just, I could not believe how much confidence um, that student had acquired. And it was such a beautiful thing to see. And they can uh, know these cooking techniques, they, they know how to cut vegetables, they know how to prepare uh, the different items. So all of the aspects of the, the cooking processes that they learned over the, over the class, uh, they'll be able to use every day in life. In this course, the students were encouraged both to make changes in, in their day-to-day -day lives, in the choices that they made, and they were at the same time being educated about ways in which they could have an effect on the environment around them. Child nutrition is something that's really important to me, and uh, I wanted to understand it more because as a child, I was really like significantly overweight up until about uh, early high school is when I started to make a significant change in my life and actually go from being severely obese to uh, how I am now more like. And so kind of going through that struggle, I kind of like wondered like, was it the things I ate completely? Well, for what, what it did for me was it like changed my whole, like the whole aspect of how I view just the food industry in general. I think one of the things that surprised students most was seeing how almost aggressive and, and pernicious and how how the, the companies kind of would target children and, and really a, a target group that they know is at risk from these products and how they would sort of, with, with disregard for the health consequences, they would move forward spending billions of dollars to aggressively market the wrong foods to our children. Advertising companies target young children as sort of the food decision makers in the family that they target these kids figuring that they'll be able to convince their parents to buy them this brand of cereal or this brand of snack um, and that they spend a lot of money, 1.5 billion dollars a year I think it was, on advertising directed towards children. What am I eating? Like, I, I think that's maybe a question that I don't ask myself enough. I just kind of, in the, even in the dining halls, just kind of put food on my plate, but I don't know, what exactly am I eating? What is in this? Where did this come from? How was this prepared? What went to making this food? And how do I know that it's good food if I wasn't necessarily the one to make it? So Dr. Adam had us calculate the price for some of the meals that we were making um, in the kitchen at Ariaga. And one of the interesting things about that is that it was it's very affordable to cook your own meals um, for kids. Yes, I see. <laughs> what is it? Here, letter. Nope. I care a lot about you. <laughs> and then have a great day. Uh -huh. Love, Allison, Kevin, and Morgan. Oh. That's those three people over there. Okay. The most shocking thing I've learned, I think, is how like easy it is to actually cook. <laughs> to actually like learn how to uh, make things, like just like like just from scratch, it's um, it's not that hard. <laughs> And I think people really think it is that hard sometimes. If you have a couple pots and pans, you can do a lot with them. Um, 
And I think most people don't realize that and they don't realize how little time it takes. I think that's been like the most shocking thing was like, hey, even I can do this. <laughs> Eating doesn't necessarily have to be down to a super strict science. It's about making more general like lifestyle changes and sometimes just general things that make people might regard as little things actually make like a really big difference. My absolute wish, my dream, would be that a class like this, a class on basic nutrition and cooking, would be a required part of every educational institution from K through 12 and up to the college level. We just need to make sure that everybody going out into this world knows the components of a healthy meal, knows that foods that are less processed are gonna be better for you than foods that are highly processed, and a few of the basic skills of cooking simple meals. I think that would be a huge investment in the health of our nation. This is not like any other class that you will take here. Just, yeah, I mean, you're not gonna, I'm <laughs> just learning how to cook. It is like really practical, practical information. I would definitely recommend this class. I had a lot of fun this year. Dr. Adam is a great teacher. To the aspiring cook at home, I would say just go for it. Just have no fear. I think, you know, the worst thing is when you feel that if you don't follow a recipe exactly, it's going to be a big failure. If you're putting together ingredients that you like in a way that is appealing to you, the result is most likely going to be something tasty. If it's not, you can tweak it the next time. Don't stress. Um, work with, with good ingredients and, and take your time, enjoy the process of cooking. It isn't something that should be rushed. It's something to where food has gotten to be too much of a eat it quick and cook it quick and, and run. To where as if you can take your time and get some good ingredients, enjoy the preparation process, enjoy the cooking process, and enjoy the eating process. That's what's the, the great thing. And, and have good friends around to enjoy it with you. Or, uh, you know, that's, that's gonna be the best thing. Be able to enjoy your friends and your food. The more you experiment, the better. And just getting in there and doing it. I think that's the most important thing when you're, when you're starting out. Eating is something wonderful and fun, and it's a time to, to spend meaningful moments together and to relax together. So I think that one of the keys to success on all of these levels is to make this not a punitive thing, but a celebratory, a celebratory return to home cooking.